joined by Delaney Jane, which is very exciting. Thank you for taking some time for us this afternoon. Of course. Thanks for having me. It's It's been a while since I reconnected to my uh, Canadian fam. That's right. Of course, uh, from Toronto, is it? Yeah. I, I mean, technically, I grew up an hour west of Toronto, but, you know, for everyone else, yeah, Toronto's close enough. <laughs> yeah. Every time people ask, I'm from Winnipeg, but I'm not actually from Winnipeg. Just outside, yeah. you know. Yeah, let me just keep it simple. <laughs> We've been playing a lot of your music over the last few years, specifically uh, most recently uh, with Virginia to Vegas with uh, Just As Much. So a uh, huge fan of the work you've been doing. And I understand that you have continued. you got a whole lot coming up in the near future. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, the support is um, so appreciated, you know, both by me and uh, Virginia to Vegas. That song is so special. Um And what's kind of ironic about it is that I wrote it originally a couple years ago now when I was going through a breakup and I'm now going through another breakup. So it's taken on, you know, different meaning, but the same meaning all over again. And it's just, it's crazy how so much time can pass and yet you hear a song and like that one, it will still bring me to tears. So I hope that everyone else feels it as much as I'm still feeling it. Um, And as far as what's coming next, oh my gosh, I've been working pretty endlessly on um, the new music through all of the pandemic. And I'm, I'm kind of like switching lanes a little bit, like always staying true to my sound and my very raw emotional, um, you know, storytelling. But I would just say, you know, get ready to hear some weird genre bending, (laughs) like very out there, almost like some uh, old Gwen Stefani, no doubt vibes coming in. All right. But yeah, I'm I'm super excited to share this new stuff with everybody. Hey, I'm a big Gwen Stefani fan. I'm not I'm not at all disappointed that you're going in that direction. (laughs) That's pretty awesome. What and you kind of you started in like EDM, right? EDM and kind of some pop, so kind of shifting a little bit, which is kind of it's got to be fun to do that shift. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy journey, honestly. Getting to kind of come up in the EDM world was so fun because, I mean, that whole scene is just like the highest energy, and oh. getting to play all the craziest, biggest festivals all over the world. I was able to see the world, Asia, <laughs> Indonesia, America. Um, you know, the list goes on, but. Uh, I always had so much to say from my own heart. Um, And I, you know, as much as I loved writing top lines on uh, electronic dance records, I'm like, man, my heart just yearns to tell my own stories. So yeah, yeah, when I, when I kind of switched lanes and dove right into pop, um, I finally got to express all the things that had been bubbling up inside me. And, you know, I've been writing poetry since I was a little girl, playing mm-hmm. acoustic guitar since I was 14. So I was always writing my own songs. Um, getting to put out my first album, Dirty Pretty Things, was one of the most uh, fulfilling things to my heart and soul in my entire life so far. So, yeah, I'm really ready and excited for this next album because it's like the next chapter of my life that. Uh, that I'm really excited to share with people and I think will be really relatable as well. Well, I'm talking about your life. I'm First off, sorry to hear about the breakup. You doing okay? Yeah, you know, it's like this. It's like this. It comes in waves. Yeah. It's, it's a weird one because I feel like I met my twin flame at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. And so we've separated, but we're still so madly in love with one another. Oh. So it's very confusing, you know, oh. not having like very clear black and white, like, no, we're not meant to be together. But I am just putting my faith in the universe and trusting in divine timing. So, yeah, how giving do, it to the greater spirit that I believe in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to ask. The, I, I, I want to ask this nicely and gently. But being an artist, who, like you've said before, and talking about writing songs about your own personal experiences and and some like, uh, for example, just as much being about a breakup. When mm-hmm. when you do have a breakup or something big like that, there's got to be a part of your mind that goes. This sucks, but I'll at least have stuff to write about. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. <laughs> like, it's really kind of messed up. Because like, I've, I've had conversations about this with my writer friends and just other friends in general. I'm like, there's a part of me that like feels alive again. <laughs> like, a part of me really thrives in the chaos and the heartbreak. 
and it's it's so strange and i think part of it even goes back to my childhood where i was i was used to like chaos all the time and yelling and oh, like anger yeah. and a lot of emotions so i mean i've done my own personal work in healing to kind of move through through that but it's um it's definitely a blessing when it comes to my writing because i feel like the best music i've ever made has come from the darkest moments of my yeah. life so yeah you just, you, you know, there's a silver lining. Yeah, there yeah. Is. Silver lining. You just don't want to get to the place where you're having breakups on purpose, I guess, right? Like, that's yeah, probably exactly. the dark spot. I don't want to be, yeah, no self sabotage. That's, that's, right. that's like, yeah, no, I would need some help. For All right. That one. On a little bit of a on a little bit of a lighter note, because I know that you're coming from LA here and uh, grew up in the Toronto area, as you'd mentioned. So, uh, winter versus summer. Do you do you ever come back for Canadian winters? Mm, okay, well, I obviously come back for Christmas <laughs> to be with my family, but do I come back specifically for Canadian winters? No, I do not, and mm. I don't miss it. Mm. However, I still appreciate the snow because I'm a snowboarder. So yeah. I actually just got my, um, I made my way to Big Bear, nice. which is about two hours from LA, for the first time. It was my first time snowboarding in California or in the United States. And it's so crazy to me how I could be at the beach and then drive two hours and be snowboarding down a mountain. So, you know, I love, I do love the seasons just when I want to pick and choose, like when I dabble into the cold and the snow, besides that, I'm such a sunshine baby. I'm an Aries. So like (laughs) fire heat, I, I do hot yoga every morning. Like, I give me that heat, you know? I yeah. thrive in, in the heat and sunshine. Talking a little bit about your childhood, because you had mentioned that, and you'd mentioned, uh, like, learning to play guitar and, and writing poetry and stuff. Was was music always going to be the thing, or did you have, like, competing interests and music won out? It's a great question, because if I'm being completely honest, uh, music started off as just hobby it was really it was really writing poetry that started became first and foremost journaling uh, writing poetry and that was my way of coping with all this stuff stuff at home I was going through um when my mom bought me an acoustic guitar at 14 was when I first discovered the ability to put my poetry to song and even then I'm like well I love this so much and it just it just pours out of me even when I'm not trying like I'll be you know like going for a jog or like doing the dishes or something and I would have lines and melodies come to my head and I have to write it down but I never thought that I'd be able to make that my life um it was, you know, one of those things that I feel like we've all gone through in our in our life is like, I'm not good enough or, you know, that that won't be me. I'm not going to be that star on the stage. And and it got to a point where I would try to do other things, but I'm always pulled back yeah, to yeah. music and writing. And like, I remember when I was a server at this fine dining <laughs> restaurant and yeah. I got written up twice for one. I was like crouched behind the bar. <laughs> Like I was writing on my notepad that I'm supposed to take like orders on and I'm voice recording on my phone and my manager came around and I'm like crouched there. I look at her. She looks at me. She's like office now. (laughs) That was my first write up. My second write up. I was walking like through the restaurant holding a tray and I was harmonizing to the song that was playing because they always played the same playlist. And I'm like, I know all the songs. I'm going to harmonize this. I got written up for singing on the floor and I'm like, okay, this is not for me because you know, my light is shining towards music, and this is just like, you know, making me so much smaller than I am. Cro- crouching behind a bar, I get that one. I mean, you're not working, but if you're actually it's just singing in the red, like, that's a little yeah. bit of a grump that's managing the place. That's not on I, you. I agree. I think she had it out for me. It was always the same manager writing me up. She had it out for me because I was just this bubbly little, like, yeah. ball of light and <laughs> energy, and she was cranky, you know? <laughs> So these days, when your songs, when your music comes on the radio and you're listening to it, what's what's your reaction when you hear your own stuff in a setting like that? Well, you know what's sad is that I haven't been in Canada for a while now, so <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I heard myself Aww. on the radio. However, I can remember, you know, when I was back there and hearing myself. I mean, to usually... I don't know why, but usually I'm in the car with my mom. She's like, oh my God, the light turns it up. And I'm like, Jesus, like she freaks me out. I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. It's amazing. Um, it's it's always surreal, to, you know, um, 
but I find joy in watching other people's reactions so yeah. much. Like my family, my yeah. friends, them sending me videos and like Delaney, like hearing you, they're in a shoe store and you know, bad habits are just as much comes on. And yeah, I just, I get excited from seeing everyone else super excited. Yeah, absolutely. It does, it does take a little bit of time though to get used to listening to yourself, doesn't it? Like when you yeah. feel comfortable hearing yourself in a place like that. Yeah, like is this real life? Like that, <laughs> that came from me and my team? Yeah, oh, that's so it's cool. amazing. It's really amazing. All right. Well, I've kind of lost track of the time. I'm not entirely sure when we started <laughs> chatting, so I should let you go so that uh, uh, so that I don't tick somebody off or whoever's next to interview. Delaney, oh, you're all good. It's been a pleasure, Kenton. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for chatting. This has been a delight. Thank you. And again, thank you so much for the support. i um, really glad you guys are loving my music, and I can't wait to share all the new stuff with you. Cool. Later. Hey, bye-bye.